Good afternoon, Springmore. Hope y'all are having a wonderful day. Television channel for our weekly town hall meeting every Wednesday at 2 o'clock. I've lost track of how many we've done, but um, but we do them every Tuesday at 2 o'clock. So I hope y'all enjoy tuning into these to try to get a little bit of information. And then, as always, Holly will um, we'll send out a recap of everything we talked about. Um, and, of course, we'll send out to all families and staff, so everybody's on the same page, and uh, we'll continue to roll along and be as transparent as possible and keep everybody up to date. So got our usual crowd here today, Daniel Sakaris and Brad Dilday and Holly Guilfoyle. I did, I'm not going to call her Martin this time. I did mess up that last time. And we do have a new person in attendance, Lori Higgins, one of our chaplains. So we're glad to have her here. Um, she can even provide a word of prayer if we need to. I probably will need it by the end of the week, but um, and perhaps y'all as well. But anyway, thanks again for joining in. I just want to go over a couple of uh, announcements and some updates, and then I'll get into some questions and take some um, some questions here before we end. So um, I just want to tell everybody thank you so much if you've already donated to the Employee um, Appreciation Fund. We've had a tremendous turnout so far. We've had over 251 donations so far. And I can confidently say that we have enough for everyone to receive a meaningful gift. And I know a lot of people want to know what that is, and I'm excited to share with everybody um, next week what that is. We're going we're gonna to continue the campaign through Monday. So, um, so if you haven't given yet and you would like to, or if you've been thinking about wanting to give, um, please uh, put a check to made out to cash or cash into one of the seven service promise boxes, um, one in uh, North Village um, right outside the great room um, before you take a right to go to West or walk through dining, and then over in South Village right at the di right at the mail room. So you can do that. You can drop off at the front desk, or you can give it to Vidya personally. Um, you can hand it to her in the bank. She's here Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 9 to 2. Again, she's been collecting and tracking and tallying everything for us, and uh, she's just been incredible. So we're going to be working of how to distribute and when to distribute the money and have people involved. Uh, Ms. Christensen, if you're watching, I'll be in touch probably tomorrow to start getting a game plan together because we wanted to get we do want to get the funds out to the employees as soon as possible to help them as times still continue to be tough for a lot of people. Um, so we're, we're really, really excited to be able to pr provide this to our employees. So, so thank you all so much for that. Um, I want to jump into dining services real quick. No really updates on that. Um, we'll have some questions later about um, things opening uh, as far as dining services. But, um, but right now, I hope everybody's enjoying breakfast. I know that they're doing that Monday through Friday, and there's four options you can choose. So I hope that is going well. Um, please take advantage of that. I know there's a hardcore group of um, people that like their breakfast, have a good breakfast crowd. So I hope you all are enjoying that. And hopefully some people that don't normally get out for breakfast are taking advantage of that. So um, please do that. Um, premium entrees, they start tonight. Um, they'll be tonight, tomorrow, and Friday night. And then they'll repeat again on next Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So we'll see um, how it goes from there, and we'll kind of decide if we want to continue that or if that's going to be a two-week run. Um, a lot of that will depend on, on just kind of the logistics and how it works out, um, and also with our with our kitchen as well. We're, we're we're moving along with our kitchen renovation. We're about a month out for full completion. That includes inspections and stuff as well. So just be mindful. Once the the kitchen's complete, we still have to have health inspectors come out and and permits presented and all that good stuff that takes unfortunately a lot amount of time. So so we'll. We'll be up and running hopefully within two months of uh, completely everything out of that back parking lot, completely into that kitchen, because it's going to take quite some time to break everything down and get the permits approved. So we'll have to keep that up for a bit longer, even when the kitchen is complete. So just be mindful of that. Um, JP, our new staff, he, uh, new staff, JP, our new chef, has been working with our staff, mainly our cooks and some of the line production people, to to kind of kind of train them and see where their skills are at and where he needs to help and maybe devote more time to. So that's going really well. We're so glad to have him. We had him um, last week on the show to tell a little bit about himself. And um, so we're super excited. I can't wait for y'all to actually see him and talk to him in person when things loosen up. We'll do some demo cooking and be able to meet and greet with him and ask him a lot of questions. So 
So that's um, for, for dining services. Um, but I do want to quickly say um, I have a trivia question here that I want to ask everybody. Um, I was um, I, since I've been um, since the dining room's been closed for the past two months and the employees haven't been able to eat. I've been bringing my lunch every week. Um, I have not done that in probably since high school. Um, so it's been um, different to bring um, food. I've, um, it saves me um, a lot of money, um, and it also um, helps me try to prevent not eating too bad of food. So going out and getting fast food every day, that's not always the case, but, you know, we all fall short. So I have got this really cool new lunch box that I've been bringing every day, and I wanted to um, do a trivia question. So if the first person that can tell me what, is, what this lunch box is, first person to call 7054 and tell me what this is, you'll win a free premium entree for next week. So premium entree of your choice on me um, if, you can, if you can call and tell me what this lunchbox is. So hopefully you guys can see that. I'll let Daniel zoom that in a little bit. Um, I'll turn it here on the side, and I'll turn it like this. We don't have any callers to know what it is. By the time we start taking questions, I'll, I'll give some hints. But it's um, it is a uh, something I was very excited to see. So it's a lunchbox and is a fictional character from a movie. I will say that. All right. So no calls yet. All right. We'll see what we got. All right, so I'm going to move on to resident life and our pathways. Um, this is a really cool notepad that Leah has, and, and everyone will be receiving these here very shortly. Um, these notepads will be given to all residents, and the purpose is to put sticky notes on the doors um, of staff and friends, just to say hello, just to say thank you, just say I miss you, look forward to seeing you soon, just a little something to try to keep people busy and uh, give you a little something to do and a way of communicating with people when you don't get to see them as much. So again, these little notepads, uh, Leah will be sending these out very soon. I got a lot of good compliments um, about the, the surprises and the treats she gives. Uh, this is just another thoughtful thing that she's doing. Another thing I want to remind everybody, on Friday at 1 o'clock, um, all of the admin staff is going to be um, delivering ice cream to your residents. So we'll go to all the apartments, all supportive living, houses and villas everywhere. And I think there's three choices. Um, I can't recall exactly what they are, but I know there's three choices. I know um, Randy and I will be um, doing the houses and villas on the golf carts. And like I said, if you live at the bottom of the hill. I hope there's some left. We will try our best not to eat it all before we get there. But, um, but we will start that Friday at 1 o'clock. Um, all staff will do that. If you do not want ice cream, please just put a little note. Hopefully you may have these by then. Uh, saying do not disturb or um, you know, no, no ice cream for me, anything like that, and we won't bother you. But hopefully we'll see everybody at 1 o'clock on Friday. Looking forward to seeing some people and just saying hey from a um, of course, from social distance, but at least just saying hello. And uh, lastly, for the resident life, we have a new mail system in North Village, and it's color-coded by hanging files. So that's right outside of Lee and Juliana's office and right in front of Randy's office of where we've been um, putting the mail for North Village. Um, again, the mailboxes are so small that we have just had to um, get creative, and um, I'm not sure when the mail system is going to be lifted. Or I'm working on a few things for that as things kind of loosen up because uh, the residents have been so gracious, volunteering their time and efforts. But uh, that can't continue forever, just like the other things can't continue forever. So we're working to get in resolution on that soon. But in the meantime, uh, just remember North Village, um, just put the, um, the, the new mail system is up in the bins, and they're color-coded. South Village, nothing's changed. So, All right. Uh, so spiritual wellness, Juliana joined us, so we, um, we are blessed, literally, to have both chaplains here um, with us today in attendance. Um, double the prayer um, for me will be needed, and if y'all need some as well, we have some good stuff going on. So let me tell you what we got. Uh, the chaplains will host another Zoom discussion group tomorrow, May 21st, from 1030 to 1115. For those on our Zoom group list, you should have received instructions to join the call this morning. If you're not on the mailing list but would like to join us, please call or email Juliana. 
Uh, she says, I'm available. I would probably not be a good person. She is available for technical assistance as well if you, as well if you have not joined Zoom before. It's not difficult to join a Zoom meeting. She promises. So once you're connected through um, the phone, tablet, or iPad computer, you can see and speak with friends no matter where you are on and off campus. So again, it's a really neat interactive tool. It's very similar to FaceTime if you use that on an iPhone. It just has multiple people you can link on there. So, um, so um, I we have a meeting every week um, where we do Zoom. We uh, Brad and I had a meeting yesterday where we did Zoom. It's uh, I guess it's kind of the kind of the new thing. It's I don't really understand how it's different than Skype was like ten years ago, but. I, apparently, I bet appear, I bet obvious. Well, what I'm trying to say, I've not heard the word Skype in forever, and I've heard Zoom in the past two months. So I don't know if Skype's in existence or not. Maybe a trivia question for next time. But anyway, we're on to number two for the chaplains. Uh, the chaplains will begin the next Bible study broadcasting on Springmore TV 1341, where you're watching this great broadcast today, on Tuesday, June 2nd at 3 p.m. So again, a Bible study. On 1341 Tuesday, which is next two, two Tuesdays from now, two Tuesdays from now, June 2nd at 3 p.m. The study is called Faith and Fear. We will send it, um, we will send announcements and an overview of the study within the next few days. So be looking out for that, Faith and Fear. It probably pertains to a lot of what we're dealing with today and our strong faith, if you're into that, and also everybody's fear, I think, that affected everybody during this time. So Faith and Fear. Tuesday, June 2nd, 3 p.m. Um, number three, uh, please continue to join us for Sunday School Worship. The Ruth and D.G. Harwood Sunday School class, led by Mr. Tom Jackson, will air 10 a.m. on Springmore TV. And Vespers will air 7 p.m. Sunday night. This week's Vesper service will include a sermon oh, by Carrie Ritchie. All right, guest, guest, uh, guest Vesper speaker. I think Mr. Alan Page was last week, so... I'm sure Carrie's got big shoes to fill there, so we'll see how Carrie does with her sermon. Sunday at 7, Carrie, if you don't know, is one of our Pathways directors. Um, she does all of our health and fitness, and um, a very well-liked person. I'm sure everybody knows her. Um, copies of the hymns and words of devotion by Carrie will be available near mailboxes in North Village and South Village. I'm really excited about that. Carrie is a very amazing employee. She's very strong in her faith. Um, she's got the most calming voice I've ever heard before in my entire life. She's just so calming to hear, um, so I can only imagine how great of a sermon she'll do. So that's in all seriousness. Carrie is a fantastic person and uh, does have that calming voice. I've just never <laughs> heard anything like that before. So anyway, Carrie Ritchie, next sun this Sunday at 7 p.m. And lastly, uh, we're going to continue the weekly devotions, and they'll continue to be sent out by the chaplain. So be looking for those. Those are really, really great. Um, they are nice enough to um, for me to share those with other communities that are not um, blessed literally to have um, a chaplain, much less two, at their community. So we send our devotionals to other sister communities that we're affiliated, affiliated with one way or another to let them, a staff member or a resident who um, who's a strong Sunday school type leader um, do devotions each week. So thank you all for that. Um, next, we have our fitness update. So this is from Carrie. Um, small group fitness classes started this week, and they're going well. There are still a few spots available, so if you're interested in, in reserving a seat for the fitness class, please call 7147. Again, there's a few spots left for fitness classes, so they are on a reserve basis. So call 7147 and reserve your spot. Um, we have to be mindful of gathering restrictions, specifically 10 or less people. You may arrive within five minutes of your class start time and no earlier. Please leave promptly when class is finished to allow for the next class to arrive. Unfortunately, the exercise equipment in the North Village Great Room will not be available for use during a fitness class. We apologize for the inconvenience. The reason for that is that that, 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 that um, presents more than 10 people. And I know that may sound silly of having two extra people, but we're trying to be very consistent with what's been recommended and what's the best practice. So, again, the exercise equipment will not be available during those fitness classes of 10 or less. Um, again, please remember all social um, 
distance, best practicing of um, six feet apart, um, not gathering. Um, I know it's tedious. I know it's cumbersome. I know it's extremely annoying, and it's, and it's just tiresome at this point. But um, for a little bit longer, as we kind of ease more into these things, we can't get lax on stuff. So please remember those um, guidelines. Um, congratulations to the recent bingo winners, Nancy Logan and Dr. Young. So congratulations to those two wonderful residents. Very proud that they won the bingo. I'm not sure what they got, but I'm sure it was a very nice prize, probably something healthy. Um, lastly, if you're watching, if you're waiting on guidelines for pools and gyms, we'll let you know when they're able to reopen the facilities and what the new policies and guidelines will be. Um, it will, um, we'll talk about that here in a minute. So we're kind of waiting to see what that's going to be, and we'll implement that just as soon as we can. So, I wanted to go into well, kind of that, that's kind of actually a, a good lead into this of of a proposed phase two that's supposed to start Friday and um, announced. Um, is it today or tomorrow they're supposed to announce they're going to go into phase two? I think yeah. Sometime today they're supposed to announce if we're going into phase two. I feel very confident we will. Um, everything seems to be pointing in that direction. So um, I was going to make a list of things that I wanted to talk about and questions y'all probably have, but I was lucky enough as I was about to start writing this, Miss um, Kay Bullock, thank you by the way, sent me a list of phase um, two questions for me to answer, and it's pretty much everything I was going to talk about. So that's one last thing I had to type up, and it's right here. So I'm just going to go through the list. I'm going to answer every question um, as specifically as possible. Um, I'll tell you right now, I do not have the answer to all of them, and it's going to be a wait and see. So I'll kind of, um, so again, I'll go through those. We're going to talk about on-campus stuff. We're talking about commu- um, visits uh, ca- on community campus. We're talking about the health center. So the first one, as far as campus in phase two, that's all the independent folks. Um, question is, will dining rooms be open on a limited basis? Yes, we will begin opening the dining rooms um, before too long on a limited basis. Um, the plan is for all restaurants to open Friday, or they can open as early as Friday, to 50% capacity. There's a lot of guidelines, like six pages from, from what I've heard of all these different regulations we have to do. I do know that one thing is we have to have the table six feet apart. Well, if you've been in any of our dining rooms, there's no way they're six feet apart. So we've got to, we've been working on this behind the scenes of how we strategically do that. So a lot of tables will probably not be removed, but they will be roped off. Um, where no one can sit there. I'm not sure how many people can sit at a table and how close they have to be. Um, Also, um, 50% capacity will probably be nowhere near that due to how tight our dining room is. Um, We may be operating at 25 or 30% capacity versus the um, 50 that, that is allowed just due to the size of the dining rooms, how close the tables are. But those will be open. Again, we're working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes. It's going to be a whole new procedure of disinfecting. And do we have to take your temperatures when you come in? It's, it, 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 it's going to be really, really strenuous. And until we have all the details, we don't want to um, set a date. I do, feel prob- I do feel good around the end or beginning of June. Uh, not the beginning of June, the end of this month, beginning of June. We'll have something in place where dining will be available, but I do not have an exact date. So, um, But, yes, they will be open on a limited basis, but how limited and everything required, uh, we'll have to wait till we get the specific stuff on Friday. Um, I like to wait till the official word comes out, and then we like to plan a week or two in advance um, or a week or two afterwards and then put it in place, similar to what we did with carrying the exercise classes. We started those uh, this week or last week? This week. And, um, and even though the order was lifted two weeks ago, we, we planned all that week and we started this week. So that's the same thing we'll do for dining and other services. And dining will probably take longer than the others. Will salons be open? Yes, when the salons are able to reopen in North Carolina um, as a whole, they can open here. A lot of people have asked, can we get a haircut while the salon's not open? Even though the salon is on Springmore property, it is still a licensed area just like our health center. So um, the beauticians have a license to practice, and they have not been able to practice. So that's why the salons have not been open. It's not been by my choice or their choice. There's no salons open. 
So, um, so they will open, but again, same scenario as dining. It may be a week or two after, after Friday that they open. We've got to see all the specifics for that, how far they have to be apart. Does everybody have to wear masks? Is there a certain amount of people per square footage? How many people can wait? Um, can you have a manicurist and a stylist in at the same time? There's just a lot of things to consider. So once we get all that information, again, we'll work and plan, and a week or two after Friday, we'll open that up. Now, that's not to say that you can't go to a restaurant or go get your hair done somewhere else. Um, the stay-at-home order is going to be lifted, so you're more than welcome to do that. Um, you know, I would still advise you to be very cautious about where you go and what you do, and um, still staying on campus is best. But, um, but again, that's, that's going to be lifted, so just, just be mindful of that. Um, parlors. Um, will they be open? Um, again, we're waiting to see. A lot of our parlors, I said we were going to open the parlors, and I changed my mind before sending out the update um, just due to the size. They're so small, so we've opened up a lot of the common rooms. I know I do need to open up the uh, terrace room in South Village. That's something I've not done. Holly can help me, remem remind me to do that, and we can get that opened up, I think. Um, but, uh, but the parlors are so small, so once we get a little more guidance on that, I'll be able to open those back up. Um, next, Will access to apartment building buildings be through the main entrance or other entrance, or will other entrances be unlocked? Um, I'm not sure about that. That's going to go more in correlation with our community visits on campus, so we'll talk about that in a minute. Still trying to decide what's best for that and how to phase that in. The uh, next question is, should residents continue to wear masks and maintain social distance? Yes, everyone should continue to wear masks. And everyone should continue the social distance best practice of six feet apart and gatherings of no more than 10. And if you are in a, in a group of 10, you need to be six feet apart wearing a mask. So unfortunately, that's still the recommendation. I don't see that going away for quite some time. Even when they increase the people from 10 to 50, I still probably going to be a social distance guideline. It's still going to be masks. It may be recommended versus mandatory, but we are asking all staff and all residents to wear masks um, continuously for now. So, so yes, um, you need to still wear a mask and still maintain the social distance of six feet. Next question is, can residents, visits can residents visit with each other while maintaining social distance? Yes, you most certainly can. So um, you can visit with each other, just maintain the social distance, have on your mask, and that is, um, that is no problem. Can meet, um, so remember, that's, that's 10 or less. So if, you, if you're at a group in the Ammons room, you're sitting around the fireplace, like today is a chilly day, uh, can't be more than 10 people, and if you've got to be six feet apart. So again, it's tedious, but that's what we still need to comply by, and that's still what's being recommended until further notice. Um, number seven on the, on the campus phase-in, can meetings of 10 or less be resumed if social distance can be maintained? Yes. Just as visiting with um, fellow residents, you can start back committee meetings if you like to. Um, I'm sure some will hold off longer. Some may be anxious to start sooner. Um, I know we have a MAC meeting coming up, and I think that's probably going to take place in person. I know we have 10 or less people involved with that, so that will be successful. You just need to make sure that you're in an area that we can spread out. Um, I feel the auditorium is going to get a lot of use um, moving forward with, with uh, resident committees. But as things start to gradually open back up, you know, we, the auditorium will be reserved more for other things. So, but yes, you as a committee chair can call your committees to meet, uh, but you'll be responsible, please, to be make sure it's 10 or less people and six feet apart and have on um, it, um, dur during that time. So um, the health center. The health center is going to be much different, unfortunately. Um, everything that we read and everything we hear is the health center, nursing homes, long-term care facilities are going to be the last thing to open for visits. Um, that has been the best practice since almost day one. It has really proved us well. Um, again, I talk about the employee that, that, had, the, that had the virus. Um, and again, I sincerely say I'm, I'm thankful because it, it, she was a young, healthy individual that you know barely displayed any symptoms and bounced right back and was great. Uh, if it gets in the nursing home, it could be much worse, and we pray that doesn't happen. That's been very successful so far. I can't promise it won't happen, but um, but to keep with those same good results, um, you know, I think limitate um, limit visits to the health center are going to be um, still on restriction. Now it's a it's a double edged sword, and you have spouses that live here on campus that have a spouse they have not seen physically 
and set through a glass window in almost two months. So we're continuing to work on that. Spouses would be the first people that would be allowed visitation, and then we would work other family members in. We're doing the um, the visits, uh, the window visits continuously, at least trying to do once a month. Vera and her staff's working on that to make sure that we have a schedule, that everybody can see their loved one. Uh, but as far as actually seeing, um, physically seeing people, I'm not sure when that will happen. Um, I would suspect that we would probably designate an area, designate an area in the health center where spouses could visit with each other. But um, the hard part is um, you still have to maintain that social distance. So, um, so at least you could see them and talk to them and, and um, you know, it'd be much better than through a glass window. But we'll have more guidelines on that as they present themselves. But right now, still no visitations, unfortunately. Um, the question, I had another question about community visits on campus. In phase two, can community members and friends visit outdoors on campus with residents? And in what phase can community family slash members visit indoors? Uh, example, apartments, villas, and houses. That is a great question. I have been pondering that and wrestling with that for a while, and I, I don't know the best answer. Um, I would like to start with outdoor visits first, but maybe it gets to a point where we let visitors come in. Um, I don't know. It's I can't stop people forever from seeing their family. Um, that's the hard part. Um, the stay-at-home order is going to be loosened. Y'all can go. You've always been able to go. Your family can go. They've obviously always been able to go. So at what point do I say we can have independent family members come visit you? Um, I just don't have an answer to that yet. I don't want to be jump the quick to jump to something. Uh, I think outdoor visits would probably be best for now, but there's got to be a time where we do allow visitors back in. And again, we just can't continue to um, shut y'all off from y'all's family members for months and months to come. That's just that's just not practical. And um, and it's a, against the alleged sword to have people coming in. I'm not saying that's going to happen because we don't know what we're going to do, but also people are getting very lonely. They want to see their families. It's, it's very tough. So we've got to just do what we think makes best for Spring more and use our best judgment, and we'll have some more information on that. So, again, I do not know. I'm not saying, yes, we are going to allow visitors soon, or no, I'm not. We're going to allow visitors. If we do allow visitors in the um, – apartments? Um, do we lock all the doors and then actually have to make them come through the main entrance to be screened and having a mask? That may possibly happen. So that may be the trade-off of having the doors unlocked. We lock them and everybody comes through the main entrance. I have no clue. That's just an option and we're still trying to work through that. Going to meet with our task force before the end of the week and then meet with some other individuals that can help with that. So just stay tuned for that. Um, last two things. So that's, that's all the questions I have. Y'all may have more, but that's all the information, but just be mindful and be hopeful um, that, yes, we will be easing things and we will be opening things back up to give you all a more sense of normalcy, um, but we do not know the specifics until things are announced and we have a better plan to do certain things. But everything is in the works for the good of everybody, I think, so I'm excited about that. Um, last two things I wanted to do, um, Daniel is going to load a video onto the portal at some point we were fortunate enough to be featured in an ABC News story um, on Monday night, um, which was a really cool thing. Um, had a local neighborhood um, here in North Raleigh uh, that they are um, supporting the business um, a couple of months, and they're ban um, they're joining together and um, supporting those local businesses. Uh, most recently, they did Sola Coffee Cafe, which is right down in Stonehenge, uh, Greystone. Excuse me. And uh, they bought $525 worth of gift cards. So they raised $520 from this neighborhood. Um, I'm actually proud to say it's my neighborhood. So they don't say that in the story, um, cause they, maybe because they link it to Spring more. But I had nothing to do with it. I had no idea we were doing it. I found out that um, the lady who organized it um, was going to um, decided to donate all the gift cards to the Spring more employees, so, which was super cool. Um, so the whole idea was for the community, the neighborhood, to raise money to support a business. They bought five hundred twenty dollars worth of gift cards, and then they gave me the gift cards to hand out to employees at Springmore. So I am randomly handing those out to employees that I know have went above and beyond. That they have just been a huge help to me during this time. 
and just other factors that's just played in during this time. We're going to be handing those out. So it's a really great story, and it, it involves three different amenities, um, Springmore um, and Solar Cafe and Summerfield North Neighborhood. So check it out. It's one of those still good stories that we don't hear enough. Plus, it gets to spotlight Springmore. It finally, um, I get to say a little bit about how thankful I am to have the employees here and how I think all of our employees should be honored and recognized just as much as hospital workers, which I always, you know, gripe and complain about because I feel like we're left out at times, but uh, came, gave me a chance to express my thanks to them. So check that out. Daniel will have that up soon. Um, lastly, before we take questions, I, um, Leah received this um, letter from um, from a future resident family member. So uh, uh, a lady who's planning to move in in the future, doesn't have a move-in date. Um, her son wrote this letter to us. We've been getting random letters from family members, members and we've been reading them. So um, Leah gave this to me, and we thought it would be a good idea. Actually, it was her idea. I want to steal her credit um, to read this over the air, and I couldn't agree more. So I'm going to read this, and we'll take some calls. Um, dear Springmore residents, I write to you today to wish you all safe and healthy times during this virus. I'm a 45-year-old father of a 13-year-old son named Holden. He's named after his grandmother. Holden has a 2-year-old golden retriever named Alice. I'm from Raleigh and grew up one mile south of Springmore in Valley Estates. My mother will be coming to Springmore very soon. Her name is Kathy Almond, Almond, excuse me, Kathy Almond. And her mother, which is his grandmother, lived at Springmore for many years. I'm not sure who that was. Beth told me a little while ago, and I've already forgot. Um, he, he goes on to say that Springmore is a very nice place to live, and he's always enjoyed visiting his nanny when she lived here and seeing the bird cages and walking through the beautiful gardens. I hope I'm lucky enough to live there one day as well. So that's very cool for someone roughly around my age who want to live at Springmore just like me one day. Um, um, currently, we live in downtown Raleigh. Um, and this is, um, and our favorite things to do is to go try new restaurants and visit new shops. We try to support all of our local businesses. I own, I own my own business where we develop new apartments. Our business has been great to the awards Raleigh keeps winning for best place to live, work, start a business, etc. We have 70 new people moving to Raleigh every day. I think our cost of living, along with our beautiful beach and mountains only a short drive away, make it a great place to live. I can't agree more. My son is also writing letters, and we're trying to pass the time. He is home from school, and they say it could be for the rest of the year that they will be out. And this was written. Um, that had not been determined, but I think we all know that school is out for the rest of the year. He goes to a school in downtown Raleigh um, named Explorers Middle School, and he's really enjoyed going to the school in the city. They get to walk to parks like Nash Square and Moore Square. They could eat their lunch and even have recess in those parks, his, which is his favorite time. We will keep you all in our thoughts and prayers during these hard times, and we will remain strong and positive and keep and keep doing and keep doing your very best. Love, Jason Stagall. So, local guy here in Raleigh whose mom's going to move here um, soon, and his grandmother lived here. So that was a very nice letter we wanted to highlight. We'll make sure we put that up and include that with any of the nice letters we got from different family members or residents. So um, that is all I have today for information and updates. Um, so we'll take any questions that we have. Do we have anybody have an answer to my um, to, to the to the lunchbox question? Okay. So so that was Miss Lewis. Good guess, Miss Lewis. Miss Lewis thought it was a birdhouse. It does kind of look like a birdhouse. I can see that. Miss Lewis, about the same size. Kind of got some little renderings of what a birdhouse would look like. What else we got, Daniel? Oh, Mr. Raymond, you are so close, sir. You are so close. Um, yeah, so I'm going to, if I say another thing, it may give it away, but I can't. Mr. Raymond is like, he's on fire. He's so close. He's like, Literally on fire. Like, if we were playing Marco Polo, I mean, it's just right there. So we'll continue with the um, the mystery. I'm just going to sit this nice lunchbox right here in front of me. We can see what that is. Any any important questions? All right, good. Man, I must have done a great job covering everything. No questions? All right, I want to give somebody a, premium, a free premium entree. I want to get somebody a lobster tail, a filet, some shrimp cocktail, 
Caesar salad, sparkling grape juice. All right. Well, I think I may have to go into some clues here. So, Mr. Raymond, who was very close, saying it's three C-3PO, this lunchbox is a character from Star Wars and is C-3PO's best friend. If anybody knows who, three, who C-3PO's best friend was, this is who this person is. They do make a C-3PO lunchbox I liked very much, but it was double the size, and it was just a little too much, you know, I'm, to, to bring, I think, the, the spring more every day. Um, this is a great igloo lunchbox. Whole six-pack of beer or some nutritious lunch. I hadn't tried the beer yet, but it did say it's whole six beers. Perfect for a NASCAR race or stay at the beach. Oh, yes. We have a winner, Miss C.J. Oborn's R2-D2. That is correct. R2-D2 from Star Wars. This is, um, this is what he pretty much looks like. I'm sure inquiry minds want to know, so you can Google that. As my father-in-law says, that's a Google Googleable question, a Googleable item. So check out um, R2-D2. And uh, Miss Oborn, if you will just call Jennifer. Um, I did call and get permission first where I could offer a free entree so I wouldn't get in trouble. Um, bring me a mantra. You call her, tell her what you want one day next week, either Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, and we'll make sure you get it, and that's on me. So um, so great. So I'm going to see if we have any questions here. Uh, the question was, is there a programming list for all the programs on 1341? I am not sure about that. Um, uh, Leah would be the person um, to find that out. So we'll find out, and we'll put have Holly put that in, in the memo. So that's a great question. I have no idea about that. Um, I know there's a ton of cool things on the portal. Um, I know separate from the on 1341, but a lot of cool things on the portal. All these past town hall meetings, all the vespers, all the Sunday school classes, the exercise classes. We're going to continue to keep those up. Um, we want to enhance that and create a nice library. Um, hopefully that video from ABC 11 will be up there soon. And click under important links, and Daniel will have that up there. Um, uh, yes, that, that is. So the question is, can... Can residents go off campus to visit families, but families cannot come on campus? Um, come Friday when the stay-at-home order is lifted, um, I cannot prevent that, nor would I ever want to. So um, I'm sure people, people have been leaving campus now for various reasons, grocery store um, and uh, pharmacy and maybe doctor's appointments. Um, but we've been, we've been very upfront about best practices and... Um, not visiting family, um, even though you can say I'm going to the grocery store and you go by and see your daughter. I mean, I know that's probably some people have done that, and you know that's. But yeah, I um, stay at home orders lifted Friday. As far as we know, it's going to be lifted Friday. It could change, but um, at that point, yes, I just there's nothing I can physically stop anybody from going, and nor would I ever want to. I've again, it's like I've held back so long trying to protect everybody. And somebody gave me the analogy the other day. It was kind of like letting my son first drive and let him go off by himself. And that may sound silly, but, you know, we've, we've got to let go eventually. Um, Y'all are all very intelligent, very smart people. I have no doubt you'll make the best decisions. And who am I to say you can't do something? I can only control what happens here, and I would never want to um, ever impose anything on anybody when something's been lifted. I feel, feel very confident about what we've done in the past and keeping some things in order here at Springmore and keeping doors and entrances off, um, off limits. But as far as seeing family, I wouldn't want to deny that to anybody, especially when it's been lifted. So um, I, I feel good about that. I hope to see my dad on Father's Day, actually. You know, that's what, three, three weeks or so.
It's a great question I had on my list, and I didn't answer because I don't have the question. <laughs> um, the answer is, um, if you go off campus for overnight, do you still have to be quarantined? I am not sure. I would probably, I don't want to probably say anything. Um, I, I don't see how that's possible for me to, if, if you go out of town to the beach or if you go um, to see someone um, quarantining in independent living for 14 days, um, I I think that's a double-edged sword because then you're not going to want to go visit somebody, which you have the right to do. So um, I, I don't have the answer to that. I, we will know more Monday. Um, if we do a quarantine, it may be seven days versus 14 days. It may be we come and check you for 48 hours, uh, which is obviously two days. Um, but for right now, I just don't have a strong, strong answer to that. Um, but uh, but we're, we're, we're looking to see what we need to do. Again, it's, you know... Um, I want to go see my dad on Father's Day. Do I have to be quarantined for 14 days? I don't. I don't, I don't want to be. So I mean, I get it. It's just um, I don't have a good answer. But um, but I would. I'd like to think that we would have to probably lift that um, very soon. Uh, maybe as early as Friday. I don't know. And then if we don't, it'll be a shortened time. So I got to work with Margo on that. We've had a big discussion about that amongst other communities and calls, and everybody has their own different opinion. Um, so I just try to be very consistent, and I try to follow what the government and the experts have said, but try to use some common sense with that, too, and, um, and let people kind of live their own life by also trying to just protect them as much as I, as I possibly can and feel comfortable doing. So, yep. All right, those are all hard questions, and I, um, you know, I, I, don't be the, I don't mind being the one to try to answer them. I don't know if there's any right or wrong answer. So, part of that is if I do if I do something that's right or wrong, I you know it's you know we're all kind of doing this together. So, um, or learning it together. At least we are in the industry and 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 the world. So, thank y'all again. If you have any other questions, um, don't hesitate to let us know. Holly will send out a recap. Uh, Miss Oborn is going to get her premium entree, um, and uh, you're going to be getting some cool stuff from Resident Life, spiritual wellness fitness, and more updates about when things will be opening and to what extent. So look forward to that. Um, it may be Monday before we get that out. The announcement's not going to be till Friday. So just hang tight, and we don't want to rush into anything, but just know that good things are coming soon. Thank you all so much. Have a great rest of the week, and we'll see you next week.